Hello and welcome to another weekend sort of vlog. I am 10 minutes away from the beginning of the weekend and I've had one of those weeks where it generally feels like there have been 15 days instead of five working days. I am reading Let the Right One In, uh, which is this sort of horror thriller scandi noir. Maybe, maybe not. I know very little about this book. We are currently in tier two um, for coronavirus sort of prevention slash stop spreading. So Andrew and I have decided that we were going to make the most out of it. So we're going to have a really cozy weekend. So I'll be reading this book. I don't know how optimistic it is to say I'll finish it because I'm shattered, I'm exhausted and all I want to do right now is sleep. I have a big deadline next week. It's a project about the US election so it will be done. Like it, It's not like it's going to be postponed. It has to be done and that's it. Now I need to tidy up the living room, do the dishes wrap up my work day with this final email and potentially some calls and then after that I've commissioned Andrew who's still at work to bring me back a bubble tea and I'll just have a bubble tea read a little bit or even take a bath can we have a moment to appreciate how perfect my dog is look at her eyes cutest little face what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing uh oh, is that your Russian toy? Stay. Duh. This is the before. Ta -da! I mean, it doesn't look that different, but all that is clean. And I'm starting to make some dinner. Tonight, I'm making some Asian inspired chicken thighs, spicy. Now I'm going to make some shiitake mushroom with precisely the same marinade and then I've got some tender stem broccoli which I think I'll do with some garlic and some just plain rice noodles that I'll just boil. So yeah that's that, that's my coffee machine that needs to be cleaned, it's just been emptied because I had an afternoon coffee. Do you see them? Do you see those beautiful bags under my eyes? I'm going to take Poppy on a walk. I thought I'd take the camera along because I just went to do the bins and uh, it turns out it's actually one of those crisp nights, quite clear as well, so I'll take the camera along. Um, I promise I won't focus too much on my face. <laughs> it's just so autumnal and the smell as well is very much, you know, earthy, leaves falling sort of smell. Very nice. <laughs> Is somebody very happy to see Daddy? Someone's very happy. Hello. Yes. <laughs> a boyfriend, a dog, and a bubble tea as well. Some golden tea. Oh, and some music in the background. <laughs> morning is finally Saturday and I'm whispering because Andrew is still asleep. Um, I don't know what this rush is but I woke up with this. Not sure. Maybe I just took a really hot bath yesterday and upset my skin a little bit. But yeah, I woke up a couple of hours ago, been reading, let the right one in, did some progress in that. 
it's a strange sort of I'll put it down it's a strange book um I thought it was going to be more about vampires or cult uh but actually it turns out it's more like I don't know this weird sort of relationship between two characters and you can't quite understand what's going on there um it's quite disgusting to read because there is a lot about abuse physical sexual and emotional as well so it makes me feel really uncomfortable but that is part of the story and i guess part of the reason why i saved this read for october of this year so yeah i will uh, keep you posted on how the reading goes but for now i'll make some coffee So I'm heading to the post office and that's probably the one and only trip I'll do today other than walking the dog this evening. Andrew is taking the morning walk, he's currently outside in the big field that we have next door and I'm going to the post office because we need to return the old internet router but also I put together a little care package for my friend and colleague who's currently in Scotland where measures for lockdown are even tighter than here so I thought I could send her a little bit of something nice to pick her up. currently propped on my microwave so you know the glamorous life never ends I just wanted to update you on my reading of the book let the right one in so I'm about a third of the way through the book now if not even a little bit more I like it but also I do wonder where the story is going in terms of the actual horror it's not spooky at all it's more gory so there is a lot of scenes that just make me uncomfortable but at the same time it's not because they're scary it's just because they're disgusting so I don't know so far if I were to stop reading now and have to rate it it would probably be a three out of five uh, but I'll, uh, I'll keep on reading I really do want to know where the story goes there are so many different characters that we're sort of following to be honest I don't particularly care about any of them so I, I don't know it's a strange reading experience so far it's okay Excuse me, you two, what are you doing? Hugs. What are I'm you doing? Kisses. What are you doing? Puppy! Wait. It is now time for carbonara. Look at that beauty. Oh, oh yeah. And we'll be watching some. What's it called? Married at First Sight. UK edition. Which is undeniably better than the Australian one. It's a lot later, it's almost 7pm, um, basically the last clip I think you saw was of us eating carbonara, after that we just decided that all we were going to do was watch TV, so we watched the entire season of, what was it, Married at First Side UK, and then we started watching a new series which is called Love Life, uh, which has Anna Kendrick and it's currently on the BBC iPlayer, 
seems nice, short and sweet. It's about half an hour each episode. So yeah, no updates when it comes to the book, but I am nearly halfway through. So I'll keep reading. I do think I could potentially finish it tomorrow, but as you know, if you watch multiple videos on this channel, uh, you know that for me it's not about quantity, but quality. So if I want to read, I'll read. If I don't want to read, I will not read. And now I think I might read a couple more pages and then we'll watch another episode or five of Love Live. <laughs> and I might catch you tomorrow. Bye. Welcome to Sunday. It's half past nine. Usually by this time we already had breakfast and walked the dog and everything. But today we woke up at eight o'clock in the morning and then I spent a good half hour with my parents on Skype. Yeah, I'm not in the greatest mood today. I, yeah, just stuff. But it's okay. Taking Poppy on a long walk. Probably going to have breakfast on the go. And then I'll come back and go back to my little cave <laughs> and read. Hello chicken! Hello! Somebody's got goodies. It's a couple of hours later. As you've seen, we've gone on that brilliant walk. It was so nice. So, you know when it's crispy, but it's also, I don't want to say sunny because it's definitely not sunny, but it's not raining and there is no wind. So it was nice and perfect. And it was quite nice to just see Poppy play with other dogs. And I am about to start reading. I think we're going to skip lunch and treat ourselves to pizza later on. There is this sort of pop-up pizza, um, situation about a five minute walk from here but in the meantime i'm going to pot to put an asmr sort of reading background noise i think there is a library with rain one that i was looking at um earlier today and it sounds really nice and i'm going to keep on reading i think something quite interesting is about to happen just because there has been a major turn in the plot like one thing that i'd not expect to happen has happened so i don't know i want to know what happens to especially two characters because they are the ones directly connected to this event but also so all the characters that we follow in the story which are quite a few they, they seem to have this sort of thread that connects them just so you know i've opted for this asmr what's it called autumn town asmr ambient and it just looks so nice and autumnal, even though outside. I mean, it is quite autumnal, although my garden is still fairly green. It's a few hours later and all I've done this afternoon was literally just read. I'm about 310 pages in, so this much into the book. Things have escalated quite quickly. One of the main characters has sort of become a little bit more restless, uh, so her story has sort of spiralled a little bit and from being a character with certain traits, she has become a little bit less careful. We have discovered a little bit more about the main character's sort of backstory. It's quite interesting to discover things like this. I cannot say it wasn't 
predictable this far. I feel like there are quite a lot of elements that don't necessarily need to be there. For instance, uh, Oscar, who is the male main character in the book, um, has this weird relationship with his parents. So there has been quite a lot of the previous chapter um, discussing sort of the relationship with his dad specifically, but I don't see that going anywhere. Unless more of that is going to be touched upon in the book later on, I don't really see what the point of that whole sort of subplot was. And the story itself, as I said, is fairly predictable. I cannot like we know from very the very beginning that something is going to lead to a certain event but other than that I don't really know anything else and but but I feel like it's predictable enough for me to understand how we get from point A to point B so far it's that it's an okay read I want to finish it I don't know if I'll manage today or not, but I want to finish it fairly soon because I'm, I feel like I kind of want to move to a different book. If there is one thing that is happening as I'm reading this book is that I, I remember how much I like stuff that has to do with vampires and this is sort of not giving me what I like about vampires. And if you look behind me, you probably can't see it, but back there, there is my English collection of Anne Rice book, books and those books are spectacular. They are so well done and you, you can definitely see how different the character of the vampire is formed and so many nuances about the characteristics that vampires tend to have are explained but without exposition that is put in places just out of convenience is nice and they're consistent throughout i mean she's written 20 plus books all around the specific cluster of vampires and it fits so nicely within each other's story. What I want to say is the more I read about this vampire story, because after all, yes, we do realise it's sort of a vampire story, the more I want to read a different one. We are now about to go on an even walk with with this little chicken. Hello chicken. Yeah, so we're going on a walk. It is quite cold but it's not raining or wet. Did I speak too soon? It doesn't seem to be raining or wet, but we'll work with that if it is the case. Hello, you can probably not see anything and maybe not even hear me, but here's a creepy sky. Here's my dog, which you probably can't see. <laughs> and we are walking to where's a pop-up pizza place to get some pizza. Woohoo! It does look really nice and autumnal though. So pretty up here. This place is called Telegraph Hill. What do we have? Abbiamo pizza. We have pizza. Look at the steam! <laughs> Let's go. And on this spooky day, we're crossing holy ground. We're crossing a churchyard. God's place. Ah, <laughs> oh, spooky stuff. And a cute doggy. Oh, hello, beautiful pizzas and very beautiful man. Does it come with a dip? Where is the dip? <laughs> I was making a joke about how gorgeous you are. <laughs> That's also a gorgeous little item that came with a pizza. But yeah, we're going to dig into this and oh that looks pretty good and catch you later hello again it's a couple of weeks later actually and i was just editing the vlog i've got my other laptop here and i realized that i never finished it i think the last clip that you saw was of us having pizza and then disappeared completely from the video what happened that night is that we ate a lot of pizza and I finished reading this. I can't remember whether I actually finished it on the night or the following morning before 6am, but either way, this book is now finished. I liked this book, but I didn't love it. Now, the reason why I liked it is because I think it's an easy read and I think it's quite accessible in terms of is accessible for a public that an audience, a reader that has sort of experience reading uh, fantasy fiction, is accessible to those who love horror, is accessible to those who just love some fiction that is sort of generic. The good things that I liked about this book is the fact that it's very evocative in terms of 
places. You can genuinely picture the place. You can, you are literally transported right there in a very sort of grey, cold, a bit dump, um, Swedish suburb. We were discussing this at book club because this was the book club pick for October and everybody had sort of the same feel and the feel that this would work really well on TV, as a series or on the big screen um, as it did because two versions of this film were made but as a book it feels a little bit disjointed. There is a lot going on, we follow a lot of characters and I feel like there is no need for that. Ultimately, for me, this book is a story about friendship. It's not the story of the vampire, it's not the story of the Swedish city, it's not the story of the Cold War, but there are all these elements that somehow create this broader picture. Do we need the broader picture? No, we don't. Not in my opinion, at least. I know a lot of people really, really love this book. I feel like it, you sort of lose track of what's going on for the important characters and you, you become almost interested in these characters that don't end up receiving enough screen time on the pages. So for me it was it was just an okay read. If I had to give it a rating from one to five stars it would probably be a solid three star. It's a good book, it's written all right, but it's not a masterpiece of literary fiction. When it comes to the vampire topic it's not a key part of the story. Being a vampire is not the key part of the story. As I said, I think it's more of a almost young adult sort of friendship story between two characters. And it's a story about acceptance as well. And it's a story that touches upon topics like bullying, eating disorders, abuse, which is really... that's why I think it could work well with a younger audience because they could potentially see themselves represented, heard, and you know portrayed it on pages but at the same time it doesn't really offer you a way to deal with a problem so that's when the sort of young adult part of it stops but all in all it wasn't a right book if you really want to read something that is more horror then i would think probably other books are more suitable than this because this was more gory than scary and if you want to read something on vampires then this might not be the right books to pick. This could be the right one to pick if you've never read anything about vampires and you sort of want to dip your toes into the vampire waters and see whether you're interested in that. But there are many, many, many more books that deal with vampires in a different way that might be more satisfying if you really want to look at vampires as the specific character. So yeah, that's uh, that about Let the Right One In by John Ajivede Lindqvist. Thank you so much if you watched the entire video. Do let me know whether you've read this book and whether you're thinking of picking it up. If you do love vampire books, what is your favorite vampire book? Or if you've never really read anything horror or anything particularly gory, do you think you would pick up this book? Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, it's okay. Or give me a comment, which I really, really appreciate. Thank you so much again and please do subscribe if you haven't done it already. Thank you. Bye.